Hello, world. Frida Reva Darcy and Patricia O'Connor here. And it's our Monday draw. And today it is a little overcast. It's been overcast for about two days now. It finally cleared up late yesterday afternoon. But today the clouds rolled back in. I didn't water much yesterday. I watered a little more today to make up for it. It took them, you know, it's just taking the trees a little longer to uh, to take up their water. Right now, what we're gonna do today is not really get too, too hot and heavy. I'm just going to do uh, a little uh, bench check or a little look over and see how, you're just gonna look and see how everybody's doing. Uh, Cause we haven't been, we haven't been doing our videos quite as regularly as we should have while I've been recuperating. But on the other hand, it's all been good. The weather's been so nice. The little, uh, this is our 17 year old. Uh, no, eight, now 18 years old. I got it as a 17 year old over a year ago. Japanese black pine uh, started from seed and uh, it's doing real well. Uh, I I'm able to rotate this tree around so that not one side is thrown in that shadow like that. And some other people, when I was talking about this before, were they were talking about maybe putting a bounce up there. I don't really know that I would get, I don't really know that I would get, you know, necessarily that much from that. So uh, I think just rotating it. Now, the reason that came up was when we were talking about this tree, and this is what I thought the solution to that was. I, um, I just have it propped up there. But if I could do the same thing here or have it on a ro my rotating table to where it would come out here, ideally that would be better. But whereas I can rotate that one around, that one swings out. So the attempt to turn it around would smoosh it up against the wall. So that, the way I have, I know I'm skipping around, but the way I have this, the way I have this Japanese black pine now, the back side of the tree that was in next to the dark wall is getting really, really good light. I'm not as worried about it uh, getting flagged off and getting weak and then stop allocating energy towards it because there's not enough light going to it. So the outside of the tree that's normally getting great light is exposed to the daily. And in the past that has caused a couple of problems with like wind or when the temperatures are super super hot and maybe it's breezy um they would just get sunburned or wind burned or something so uh that is but i say this for a little over a month now we've had like 70 degree days at max 70 degree days here so uh we got a little bit of rain this morning i mean not just uh I, I guess they would call it a little spit of rain. It wasn't really enough to accumulate. You would see it on the sidewalk. But um, that's kind of what I had in mind for there. I'll let it hang out there like that for about a month. And then I'll put that Japanese black pine back here. But this is the one that got sick uh, last year. And I'm really happy with the way, <laughs> with, with the way that it's bouncing back. So uh, yeah. Now I'm just gonna go try to go back in order. There's our trident maple. It seems to be pretty happy with the way things are going. We do seem to still have some burn going on back here. Uh, next year, I wanna start doing some trunk work where I wanna reduce this down to two trunks and lower it. Um, but right now, what we're gonna do is just water and feed it and make sure it stays healthy and happy and stuff before we start really freaking it out speaking of freaking it out <clears throat> this is the dawn redwood that on our 90 degree day <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago this guy took a, a hard hit and uh it's coming back from that now it's probably at a point where i could bring it inside and put it on the table for a minute and maybe try to make some sort of sense out of this <clears throat> but I'm not really in the mood to be picking anything up because I've still got oh, a couple of dozen stitches in my face, which is not a lot of fun. So yeah, picking stuff up or p 
picking up heavy things are not quite in. <clears throat> also, just letting it recover. It's putting on a whole lot of new growth to uh, try to put back what it lost. And uh, sometimes Don Redwoods do that. And sometimes they freak out and just go, okay, that's it till next, you know, and you can lose a tree that way. So uh, allowing it to just go like stink, as they say, is what I uh, said. I backed off on the watering. I didn't want it. <clears throat> I didn't want the tree to uh, stay over watered because it lost um, some of its ability to uh, to move water with all the leaves going. It's kind of like a, a reflex action. When you lose a lot of foliage over heat, you want to go in and just, you know, flood the thing and then just keep trying to uh, pet it and take care of it and give it more of everything. But at that time, especially, yeah, you may want to go in there and cool its heels a little bit and cool the tree off. But at the same time, right after that, you want to mind how much you water it so that you don't end up rotting the roots uh, while you're waiting for your foliage to come back, which will uh, actually increase the water usage, which is how that works. So that would bring us next to the list would be the Japanese black pine, which I've already talked about. It's, it's pretty happy, clappy. Um, we can back up and take a good look at the uh, at the uh, ponderosa pine, and uh, we're doing a little needle exchange right now. It's got all these little buds and all these little shoots on it. These little jackets with with uh, nice green needles coming out. And meanwhile. There are places where the old ones are still uh, taking their time about moving along. They don't really have a great color to them, but they uh, they haven't extended yet or showing any signs of being quite ready to move along yet. But the tree is just putting on a lot of new needles and it's really, I'm really glad to see all the little buds and all the little shoots. We're, I'm feeding. Uh, I'm feeding this tree still, and uh, I'm watering it less than I would uh, a Japanese black pine, probably a third less. And uh, so far, that's worked out okay. Uh, you grow these a lot differently than you do. Japanese black pines, but in a lot of ways they're easier. You just got a few things to worry about and that winter thing is one of them. Uh, that brings us to this guy. This is our uh, cypress tree. So back up a little more. Let me pull a little Patricia hair out of the damn tree. I'm gonna back up and see if how wide I can get. This is usually the part where I trip over something. Anyway, <coughs> yeah, that's almost all of it. That's uh, three uh, bald cypress trees. And uh, I've had them in <clears throat> this container a little over a year. <clears throat> I probably had the trees about a year and a half. They've been in the container uh, a little over a year of that. And uh, I slip potted them. I slip potted each one of them in there. <clears throat> and they are actually planted at different height so uh, they both had a little bit of, of buttressing to them but not a lot it was like it looked like a little knuckle but underneath the surface so uh, I wanted to get their height to be about what we see there and uh, not messing with their root balls a lot because I didn't like the time of year I was transplanting it made, meant that I wanted to just slip bottom so the way that I had to arrange those root balls, that also played right into that. So that's kind of, kind of dictated the height of the trees, but I still, you know, the dominant tree is in the center. And uh, that is quite a bit of uh, mostly Akadama. I ran out of, I bought what I thought would be just a, a ton of the stuff. And I ran out, um, I ran out right at the end, like like it could have been enough, but there was still some roots exposed on the top. So that's when I busted out this boom mix 
and uh, dress the top in that, which actually gave it some color because of the lava rock and the pumice and the other stuff that's in there. It made for an okay top dressing, although uh, normally had I not run out of, uh, I mean, I literally, I, I bought a huge tub of Vakadama and I thought, you know, surely I would have enough. Uh, I thought I would have some left over. Um, so that's Akadama, pure Akadama work really well with the cypress trees because they do retain water. They do give the uh, roots a good reason to bifurcate out and just get smaller and smaller and smaller. So we were all about that. Otherwise, I don't really tend to do, uh, get some Patricia hair out of the damn trees. Uh, I don't tend to really do uh, a lot of top dressing. Usually what it is is what it is. I won't usually sprinkle something on the top to make it a different color. I, that's just where I ran out and thought, well, we're going to uh, top that off with some boomings. And it wasn't a bad look. Uh, this does moss over a little uh, a couple of times this summer. And I have to go through and clean it, not because of the moss necessarily. I don't mind that. What I usually have to clean is uh, the liver wart and the uh, starweed and all the other stuff that goes in there. Uh, right now, the trees have, I would say, most of the trees have sort of slowed down because of the weather, not because of the heat has got us in a stall or anything. It's just been so temperate lately. It's not really sure if it's fall or what. Uh, normally, I would expect that guy be going up towards the light but it's kind of hanging in there and this is the chop that we did a couple of weeks ago then this is the new leader that we started uh feeling hopeful about uh last winter when it first broke out i went if i get a bud over in here we're gonna see a new a new leader of the band there so to speak and uh this wire was just to keep it on the straight and narrow on the windy days and it could go off at any time, but right now it's not It's not hurting anything other than it probably has a little effect on uh, how much carving I do to this. I will carve this back better, uh, carve this back farther back because I don't want, uh, I'm not going to want that bulge out there. I'm going to want this tree to do its thing this way and this way. And everything else on here is doing pretty good. I went through and dropped some more um, fertilizer on some of the trees today uh, because I thought it was a good time to do that. Just you know, the ones that you uh, stopped feeding, I've already stopped feeding a couple of weeks ago with the ones that get fed year round. Some of those guys were, had uh, mostly eaten up their little, their little fertilizer chunks. So uh, I think the oaks got some and uh, I think my maples got some in the trident. I mean, not the trident, but the Don Redwood got some. And uh, yeah, I need to go back in and get some tools for a second. We'll continue this little, we'll continue this little game. Frida and I have just been uh, kind of hanging out. We've been watching bonsai videos and enjoying life. I recently discovered uh, dog videos and uh, it's only fair you know I mean she sits there patiently and watches uh, so it just kind of seems fair to me that we occasionally and they're not bad they're really entertaining the only thing is with my hearing I don't know if I'm being conned or not you know she immediately looks at the screen so fast I'm like how did you know there was a dog on that screen and then I'm going, well, you know, you would be the last one to hear uh, a high pitch whistle if they were playing one. You know, is the dog actually just responding to a dog whistle or is that really that fascinating? But she seemed to find it fascinating. So we gave it, you know, and now whenever things, whenever I get caught up on everybody else's videos, we, uh, we watch dog videos for Frida. Uh, it's laughable they just absolutely anyway that's what's been going on there and yeah that's how that's how bad it's gotten as far as what i'm willing to do entertainment level wise i've been catching up on uh 
superhero movies too over the weekend I uh, caught up on some more some comic movies that I had superhero movies that I had never got around to watching that was fun uh, anyway that's a quick look at uh, Hondo Hondo the Pondo this is a hundred and 75 year old uh, Ponderosa Pine uh, Succulorum 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 yeah and uh, I've had it for a couple of going on two years going on two years a little over a year and I absolutely love this tree it's one of two uh, ponderosas that I have and uh, I live right on right on the border of what their uh, grow climate is said to be so I'm a little bit concerned about how cold our water uh, how cold our winters will get but other than that uh, that tree golly how about that tree you can kind of see now the contrast all of these really hard green beautiful needles are all coming out and all these really spent ones are hanging out here really discolored they almost look like straw on a broom but they're not letting go yet those are third year needles i suppose so yeah and then as we were just talking about the cypress tree uh those guys um <clears throat> they seem to have slowed down a little for the summer they just got fed I'm not going to go clipping anything back, although although you can kind of see there, I've got one, two, three, four. I should probably go through and clean some of that up, or that not there. Well, that's the base of that, and there's more on the other side. I should probably clean some of that up, or it's going to cause a... You know, I could just say, well, all of that's just going to make this part bigger. True, but at what cost? Uh, I don't know. Maybe not be so reactionary. Maybe wait and see. That could also help me, I suppose. I mean, it's not exactly filling in. It's not exactly filling in this crack. But this is going to cause all of this part to get bigger. And this is the main thing happening in town. So if I let that go a little lot longer, that may help us out. Uh, same with that guy. This tree is doing pretty much what we want it to. When I look at the limbs, I don't see a lot of what I call bicycle handlebars, which would be a limb here or a limb here. I also don't see, uh, the closest thing I have to that is this guy right here. And this guy right here, those kind of make a bicycle handlebar would take out would take out I don't know maybe take out the outside one the only reason is this the biggest one uh, okay so I took that out that little whip in there I don't know. I guess that's fine. It's natural looking. So, yeah. I love the smell of cypress trees. You could smell, you know, just handling the fronds a little bit. You move the air around that was, I guess, stagnant underneath the trees. And they have, it does have, you could just totally, your senses get filled with that scent. So, the, uh, of the cypress trees, they smell so good. Oh, wow, look at that. Uh, this would be, this is on, uh, August. Yeah, we just blew by July like it was, like it was sitting still. Uh, this is going to bifurcate off. We're gonna, now we're on the court bark oak. This would be a good time. Uh, the next time I water to uh, add systemic to our uh, to our watering, and in that I do it like uh, early spring, and then again midsummer, 
and in that way this is a good time for the predators to uh recognize this little lull that we're in right now and start moving in so a systemic is a uh a treatment against uh pesticides pests that comes from the inside of the tree out kind of like giving your pet a flea pill uh this kind of is a lot what it's like this tree is being very, very prolific, and we love that about this tree. However, it's still early in the game, and I think that if I keep pruning back those little tips, it'll keep vibricating off more and more and more, and we'll get, uh, we'll build more and more branch structure. The downside to that is, is, uh, you might be able to tell at some point a year or two from now that a lot of this stuff is uh, strangely the same size. You know what I mean? You'll be able to tell that it'll all have the same diameter to it because it was grown in the same in the same year. <clears throat> That's easier to fix, to my way of thinking, than not having all of those groovy choices. So, yeah, that was just a little clip back on that guy. And uh, I think if I rotated the tree around, I would probably see a couple of places where I need to do that again. But right now, I'm not lifting uh, anything. And I was worried earlier now we're looking at the coastal oak. I was concerned about it earlier, uh, about how many times it would put out uh, shoots and flushes of shoots this summer while we had things kind of going our way and uh, it's like I clip it back and I go this will probably be the last time because I don't want to uh, turn around and clip the tree back bare and then have nothing happen but at the same time we've still got a good long ways to go before this thing gives up for the uh, for fall so on the chance that we're gonna do this one more time, I'm gonna see if I, we can make another round of branches. Yeah. As I always say, you can kind of see, you can always kind of see where the uh, tree starts absolutely elongating stuff out. And uh, I always call that shifting. You, when you see it like shifting third gear when it's getting ready to just kind of go along that's a good time to cut that back totally pillaged that i was going to pull it under and then cut it and i totally tore it up and then tore it off uh that's uh not the same as how that's not the same as a plan I should cut that back further Let's look at that. Yeah, I should cut that back further. Go there. Okay, see, it's not interfering with this one now. So, that's the idea. I, I wait until I see where they're long, just really starting to kind of go nuts and long gate out. And that's uh, when I go, yeah, we don't need that. We're building a shorter tree, not a longer tree. So when it starts to stretch out like that, that's less useful to me. And that's a good place. Unless you see some other reason, and there could be a lot of them. So it's it not like they're gonna be extremely rare reasons. If I were uh, going a lot slower and I had some master over my shoulder, I might, I might be a little more selective, I'm not gonna lie. But at this point, it's pretty easy we had a tree that lost a lot of its shape last year in some uh, hellacious, some hellacious dieback. And uh, right now we're just trying to rebuild some branch structure that uh, we can show off or work with and keep and not let our tree get too tall. Or too lanky. See, I kind of brought all of that back again, and uh, it's not like we're building. It's not like we're building a, a 
a really beautiful shape right now, but we are vifurcating off a lot. And, you know, we're just, these were all stumps uh, last winter. After, after we cut back our, cut back our dead, we cut back a lot of stuff, just absolutely back to stumps. You can kind of see where that stretches out right here. Oh, almost, but not quite. Yeah. And then. So, I'm going to try to do a little, I'm trying to get slick rather than rotate the tree around, which would be the obvious way to go. I, uh, I'm trying not to lift anything heavier than, uh, Frida. Ah. Do I need both of those coming out of the same spot? I do not. <clears throat> so that's kind of what I was looking forward to doing here. Was chopping this back off so that this stuff can bifurcate off and give us two more, two more branches. And I'm pretty, I'm gonna just go ahead and try to shoot this through the pine tree. I'm pretty happy, I'm pretty happy with that. I can rotate it around and do about a third more of this and I will at some point, just not at this minute. Uh, you stuff out there on the other side, uh, don't get too smug. So yeah, that was a little quick work quick work on the oak. Uh, Wisteria number one, that's the one that started everything. It started its summer shutdown. Wisteria, Japanese Wisteria number two is followed suit. They drop all their leaves. They've already made their buds for next year. So pruning back now is pruning back bud choices. Be careful about that if you have a Wisteria. Uh, Wisteria number three is the Chinese wisteria. It takes, it's a couple of weeks behind, but it's just now starting to drop all of its leaves. Its water uptake has uh, gone down substantially. There's that word again. I'm not gonna get hung up and say it 30 times in the video. Uh, but the water intake has gone down quite a bit. And okay, we'll just go to the uh, table. 18. Uh, no, 19 or 20, I forget which now, because I got one volunteer, but I lost a couple, but I added one, and I, I, I don't know, it became a weird math problem somewhere in there. But uh, <clears throat> that's between 18 and 20 Kodahan maples. Uh, I've had problems keeping leaves on them this long in the year, because I've had difficulty watering it without getting water on the leaves, and then they get powdery mildews, water on the leaves. And I've also gotten shell shot about uh, allowing water to get on the leaves and just kind of go hardcore preaching against it. And then I'll watch bonsai masters just like they're Jennifer's and they'll just turn the hose to them. I don't get it. I don't know whether or not their environment is different than ours. Maybe powdery mildew is the thing where they live. Uh, anyway, I don't know. It's something. But what I've seen other people do, I absolutely wouldn't get away with. This hasn't had a good cleaning and this is what it looks like after about a month. And uh, we have little star weeds all over the place. We have a little clover all over the damn place. But I also dropped a little bit more food in there. And uh, we're just keeping those guys happy and productive. And they're, they're really uh, doing pretty well. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with, with the way they're looking this year. So uh, the trunks are getting more defined, and even though they were the one one of the one of many mistakes I made with this guy was they were all probably the same. Well, they were all the same year clones, so they look very much uh, the same as far as thickness and size and all that. And I kind of knew that uh, they would have a way of settling out amongst themselves. And the exposed root thing that's happening, I really gotta say, I'm liking. It's, it's uh, 
it's adding mass to the root base of some of these guys a lot. And uh, I look forward to uh, its repotting, which may be next fall, maybe not. It uh, does seem to be rising up out of the pot a little bit. I would like to clean that up. So maybe flatten it out a little and bring it all a little further down in the pot. I'd also thought about uh, negligating some of the negative space on the end by putting a break in the middle and moving it over. I don't know, that's just an idea. Uh, but it seems to be happy. It's full of weeds. I need to clean that up. But uh, otherwise, this is kind of what I was talking about. Our trunks are all showing uh, different sizes and varieties uh, due to their location and where they are in the hill and the food chain and all that. It's just really starting to do okay. I'm starting to get something that I can shape a little bit. Um, our little Shohan ball cypress, which uh, uh, had twin trunks and we did a little chop on it here recently. It is doing well. It's growing, trying to grow like a bad weed. And um, it's still taking in water quite a bit every day. And I'm pretty happy with the way it's progressing. I don't really have anything that I can shape yet, but after the trunk chop we did to it, just allowing it to come back and push out stuff, it's very, uh, it's very encouraging. And it's, it's doing just that, it's, it's showing us a lot. The, uh, our bougainvillea, I, I did, as promised, chop the blooms back on that guy and it's still taking in quite a bit of water and we're making another round of leaves. I did add to its fertilizer today, so it got uh, a little bit more bio gold, as did the oak behind it. I think you could probably pretty well see those baby leaves coming out from the bottom of the little oak. That was pulled up out of the yard and it has a couple of big ch uh, chops done by the weed eater, thanks to the landscapers. So it's probably um, a year or two old, but got pruned heavily here and here and here. More than once, it looks like. The trunk looks like it might have been chopped here more, more than one time. So at some point, I would like to clean that up. Also, all the growth up till now, everything that survived, is coming out of the uh, left side and not much on the side facing us. So this new growth coming out of the bottom here is really nice. It's really nice to see. And uh, it shows that uh, it's intending at this stage in the game to hang in there. And you know what? This is probably the third year I've tried to get a little oak from the yard. Like I also tried to get a couple of maples from the yard. And um, I've had close but no cigar. And this is the first time that I've actually seen some really positive response. And I believe that the change in fortune came from that one trick of putting my little tiny pots in trays of uh, soil. That's where all the runoff water goes. So it tends to stay a little moister and uh, the pots stay a little cooler if the tree wants to put a uh, root out of the bottom uh, and get a little extra something, it can. And uh, that helps them to hedge against that tiny pot. And you can always prune that back fairly easy later on. So that's kind of, kind of some of the reasons why I really have, uh, I attribute the success I've been having as of late with the tiny trees to that. And speaking of the tiny trees, this is the little pine tray. Uh, this one actually did, this is a uh, hoss, the ponderosa. Uh, I'm feeding it. It's got bio gold on it. I feed it year round. You can see it has little green shoots all over it. It's producing more buds, which is what we want it to do. We're gonna, we are going to get our needle length down by uh, increasing our needle count to a point to where it can no longer sustain the needle count plus 
the happy link. It'll say, well, I got this many needles. Something has to give. Y'all just got to be shorter. So at that point, it starts making shorter needles because it makes so many of them. And then a year or two of that, we can start trimming our ends back and, and, and cutting it back to the size that we uh, want it to be at, kind of like we would uh, other, other pines. That way, we, you know, if we've gotten growth coming all the way out to here or something while that was happening, we'll be able to cut that back later, but we will have finally achieved that shorter that shorter uh, needle growth. I love this little tree the way it is. It's kind of whimsical with longer needles, but um, the way to fix shorter needles was feeding it and uh, treating it well. And I just thought that was the greatest idea since sliced bread. So that's kind of what we're doing with Hoss, the uh, Ponderosa. 26 years old, um, it's a Yamadori, a true Yamadori, it was uh, collected uh, in Deadwood, South Dakota at uh, 5,800 feet. It seems to be happy. I uh, found out today my freezer is in the uh, upper 20. So if I want to put this in a cold atmosphere for a few hours a night, come winter to uh, reset its clock, that might be a possibility. I'm gonna learn more about that. This was the tree for the uh, $50 challenge that I um, uh, jumped in on. And uh, it's doing pretty well. Uh, I think maybe using the uh, soil that it was doing so well with before might have been a mistake because there's, in that pot, it wants to float out. I have to be really careful how I water it. But other than that, the tree seems to be holding its own. It's been too soon for it to do anything good or bad. Um, uh, I think the tree will probably do very well. And the reason I say that is our temperatures have been so, have been so mild lately that it probably has no idea what the hell is up anyway. I mean, it's just like, it, it doesn't break 70 degrees here. So, and it's been like that since a few days before I, uh, did a clip, but what we did do was we did a fairly large clip back on the roots at uh, not an ideal time. And, uh, but it wasn't like it really felt like July either. It felt more like early spring because of the temperatures. Bringing us now to the one behind it. This is our Bombay black pine. And this is our show hen black pine. Going on three years old from seed. Uh, I brought it home as a two-year-old and uh, made some choices and made some chops and started feeding it and watering it and it rewarded uh, and put some wire around it and put some shape on it and it rewarded us with uh, a bazillion buds that is a bazillion buds just hanging out all over that tree and I put a pretty good twist to it and I'm tightening up that little circle that you can see down there at the bottom with a band of wire that I've looped through there like a belt and then every couple of days or every couple of weeks or whatever, I'll put another couple of twists in it. At some point I will remove all of that wire, but only after it's had a chance to dig in and create a little girth while it's there. Uh, so that's got us on those guys and those guys. And this is a little lemon cypress I found in the back seat of my lift car. Uh, two years ago Christmas Eve, no, a year ago Christmas Eve. Uh, somebody left that in the back seat of the car for a Christmas party. I'm glad they did that and didn't get sick in the back of my car. I hated it when that happened. Uh, this is my Japanese black pine that I got at auction. Uh, it does seem to be yellowing. I don't know whether or not we need to adjust the climate or, uh, I mean, that's my way of saying we need to adjust to one another, or whether or not it's just a little needle exchange thing going on because some of that is going on, or uh, whether or not that little pot that it's in is fooling me about how much water it actually takes. Or uh, something else that occurred to me just before I bought the tree, we did have that 90 degree day. Uh, it may not have liked that at all, that pot doesn't hold a whole lot of soil for the length of this tree. It might be that I'm underwatering it 
but I'm more concerned with my habit of overwatering it, so I don't want to start flagging it to see. Uh, although, yeah, also those specs make me wonder if something's up. This is a, a good time to bring up the systemic again. The next time I water, I will uh, take a, my, my large watering can. I'm gonna look at that tree and I'll just at a glance right now, I may think differently when I see it, but I'll go, that tree is in a pot that probably holds two gallons. And I'm going to put a teaspoon uh, per gallon that I see pot size uh, in my watering can per gallon of water. And then I'm going to run that water all the way through that tree. And then I'm going to move to the next one. Figure out, you know, I want to guess about how many gallons. And I, I do that. I picture milk jugs full of acodama and me pouring them in there without a tree in there. And how many of those would it hold? And then whatever figure I see in my mind's eye, I equate that to the number of uh, teaspoons of uh, solution that I mix them all, uh, one gallon of water in can, and I throw that in there. And that, uh, you do that, and then you do it again in a couple of weeks just to make sure it got in there good. And uh, that's how you do a treatment. And those who know say to do that twice a year. Uh, spring to get you ready for everything that's coming in spring. You don't want a good spring growth to be stymied by, by critters or problems or insects or something. And the other time to do it is uh, is the midsummer. Uh, probably would have been a couple of weeks ago, but now's as good as time as any. We're not. We don't seem to be suffering ill health. Oh, no. I kind of look at specs like that. And I may have mentioned that before. The specs that I'm noticing are just on one limb, which makes me think it might have been something to do with me bringing it home in the car and not actually uh, signs of an ailment. But uh, we are putting out new growth on it. And I did do a little uh, decandling once I got it. And I did that without knowing anything about the tree's history, except that it didn't look to me like it had been decandled yet. So uh, it was either do it or forget it. So yeah. Uh, I think it'll be okay. I think I'll probably just, uh, if I might need to adjust to it or it might not be anything. But if it is something, uh, the little systemic thing that's coming up for these guys and our next watering will probably go a long way towards taking care of that. Let's see, that's got this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Yeah, that's got mostly us. Uh, our trees have been doing, our trees have been doing pretty well. The temperature has been so super, super hospitable and making it really easy for me to recuperate. But uh, I still have a head full of stitches, which doesn't make picking up anything advisable or easy or much fun. So yeah, it's kind of like you don't want to hold your breath or something, right? So yeah, but at least I'm uh, starting to get some of the marbles out of my mouth, so to speak. I'm able to uh, say words and stuff that's always big like and subscribe if you guys haven't already uh i do have some not so great news about our cuttings i listed the top off that i was going to maybe do a little start on the show about that we probably have uh like a 80 percent mortality rate in there i gotta go through there and clean up there is some stuff that looks like it's doing fine that isn't to say that i pulled it up and it looks rooted, but it looks exactly like I put it in there a month ago. And to be honest, I lifted the lid a couple of weeks ago and it smelled mildew real strong. I said, yeah, with a head full of stitches, you probably just need to close that and, and just back the hell away for a minute. And uh, anything that's going to do well will still do well. And anything that's not going to do well is already on its way. And that's kind of what's my attitude about it. Now, having lifted and looked, I would say 80% is probably a good number. I did see a lot of cypress... Uh, limbs and what looked to me to be some uh coastal redwood cuttings that seemed to be hanging in there but i think a lot of our maples took hit some of those were really kind of light and, and was really kind of small i was questionable as to whether or not i would do that like i've done uh perennials before 
and just kind of basically you can start a leaf, right? So uh, that might account for some of our losses in that. Um, also, I think a lot of our cherry cuttings, but we can, uh, we have more. We can go out there and do that again. Uh, maybe I will, uh, instead of just plucking them and filling, I'll do a little bit of an autopsy and try to decide what didn't work and what came close to work and what rooted for a second before it came apart. Did anything, you know? So I want to give that a minute so I don't have, I don't have bacteria to worry about as far as me going in there and, and, and dealing with that otherwise. Uh, yeah, I kind of thinking that's part of the process. Figure out what you do wrong and then and then move around that. And otherwise, we've got our heating mat seem to be doing good. The, the uh, water, the moisture that I put in there, uh, just stays in there for a long time. It turns into it turns into water droplets and accumulates on the top, and then rains back down, and then starts to process all over again. I haven't added water to it in this whole time, and. Uh, Every day when I look at it, there's little, so no wonder that it also uh, would have made mold. I don't know, I could have maybe had more oxygen exchange during the day, uh, may have helped, may have hurt. I have to find out more about that. So yeah, that and uh, there's a little peroxide in the water. Would that have helped, would that have hurt? Just, you know, we'll, we'll figure out little tips and little little tips and things that'll help us along the way and uh but right now we do have a little bit of work ahead of us but we do have all uh i think we have a pretty good set of tools i think the setup that we have going for us will work if we can if i can figure out how to dial it in yeah uh like and subscribe if you guys have not already we will uh try to do another drop on wednesday i don't think anything's coming along that's gonna kill us uh I uh, will be a month recovered next week. That's probably when I go back to work. I'm gonna shoot for Monday and see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching.